Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing just a quick flight. That's going to be once around the pattern here at Kabaliti Air Base and then back around for landing in the Su-25T. The reason for this flight is I have a friend who only just recently picked up DCS for the first time and he's been having some difficulty with his landings and was wanting to see the sight picture of a proper or at the very least an acceptable landing. The reason that I'm doing it in a video instead of just taking my computer over to his place is I'm lazy and it's heavy. So we're going to go ahead and start up here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to sort of talk through each step of what I do as I do it. So, but the, the gist of it is take off, climb out to 500 meters and try to hold about 400 kilometers per hour. Actually, I could probably go a little bit lower than that, but it's, it's a nice round number, and I don't know the correct numbers for the Su-25. Anyway, climb out to 500, and we're going to do a 180-degree turn to the right. The reason I'm doing a right-hand pattern instead of a left-hand pattern is those mountains on the other side of the, or, well, hills on the other side of the runway are uncomfortably tall for me. So I prefer to use this nice wide open space over here, and I firmly believe that in these conditions, this airfield would probably use a right-hand pattern for this runway. So I'm going to do a 180 degree turn to the right to the reciprocal heading of the runway. So 0725, so I'll be going 250 towards the sea. When I'm a beam the runway, I'm going to drop my gear and I will slow down as well down to about 350. I should actually probably do the slowing down bit before dropping my gear, but again, I don't know the numbers for the Su-25, so I don't know what the overspeed speed is for the landing gear on this thing. So drop the gear, slow down to about 350, continue on, drop the first notch of flaps probably about a beam the end of the runway, down by the threshold, continue out until it's a 45 degree angle aft, and then when it gets to that point I'm going to do a 90 degree turn, so I'm perpendicular to the runway, I'm going to start descending it down to probably about 400 meters or so, and then I'm going to do another 90 degree turn towards the runway, lining it up and somewhere in that area as well, I'm also going to drop the landing flaps, which produce a great deal more drag than the standard flaps, than the takeoff flaps. And I'm also going to open the speed brakes. Now the reason I'm opening the speed brakes instead of just flying it in is the Su-25, in my experience, does not like to slow down. And on top of that, jet engines being what they are, they they have slow response to throttle changes. So I can, if I need to suddenly speed up, I can retract the air, the, the brakes faster than I can throttle up. So with the brakes open, I'll have to have a higher throttle setting anyway. So basically I'll already be at that setting and then I can just bring in the brakes and speed up much more easily. Now the hard thing to deal with during a landing approach, and this is something a lot of people in the simulator community seem to gloss over, especially when you're dealing with something with a much more powerful engine than a Cessna, <laughs> is uh, you don't control your rate of descent with your stick or your speed with your throttle, at least not very much. You primarily will be trying to control your rate of descent with your throttle, so if you're low and descending too fast, throttle up. If you are high or descending too slow, throttle down. And then you will control your speed with your pitch. If you're, say you're shooting for 280 kilometers per hour and you're at 300, you'll pitch up ever so slightly. And then recognizing the fact that that will probably make you start to level off, you'll also reduce the throttle slightly to compensate. So it's both together, but it's kind of a reverse mentality. It's the region of reverse control. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing to wrap your head around. Once it clicks, everything just makes so much more sense and you just end up with much cleaner approaches. Now, disclaimer, I have not flown a lot of the Su-25T and I haven't been flying a lot of DCS for a long time recently as well, so I'm not very good. But I will try to call out my mistakes as I make them. So, without further jabbering, let's get this going. I'm also going to go ahead and actually use the radio to request just so the ATC doesn't interrupt me at unexpected times. Apparently they don't want to talk to me. Okay. 
Yeah, nothing quite like being a soft-spoken guy and then having a, a, a loud Russian run over you. Nothing against Russians. Just, you know, loud. Something against loud. I don't like loud people. Well, I don't object to loud people as people. I just don't like it when people are loud. How about I just dig my grave deeper here? <laughs> I'm a quiet person. I don't like it when people are loud around me. And while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and drop my takeoff flaps. Now, the reason behind having two different settings for your flaps, for those who don't already know, you have your takeoff flaps, which only ever so slightly come down. They are designed to increase the amount of lift your wings are producing at a given speed. So you drop your takeoff flaps and they give you the ability to rotate at a lower speed than you would be able to otherwise, which shortens your takeoff roll and helps you climb out. Your landing flaps don't really appreciably increase your lift beyond that for the most part, but what they do do is they drastically increase the amount of drag you're producing, which helps you slow down and descend at a steeper angle than you would be able to otherwise. There we go. Just setting my altimeter. It's not really that important, especially with such a drastic, you know, such a small change, but anal retentive, you know. There's no other traffic around. If there were, I would try to expedite a little bit more, but. I'm the only one here. This is just a quick mission builder with no changes to the weather, no other traffic, no other anything. So, I'm going to go ahead and hold the brakes. Nice and lined up. Okay. And holding the brakes, throttling up smoothly. And the power will override the brakes right around 75 to 80 percent. So I'm going to go ahead and release the brakes at that point and continue to smoothly throttle up. Controlling my alignment with the runway with my rudder. Doesn't take much, just tiny, tiny adjustments. And we're coming up on around 250, so I'm going to go ahead and start trying to rotate, bring the nose up, and just let the plane fly itself off the runway. A good visual cue that I use is if you, from a standard camera perspective point, I try to line up the bottom of that little black bar in front, at the front of the HUD. I try to line it up with the horizon and then hold it there. And that gives you a nice controlled smooth takeoff. So I'm going to go ahead and raise my flaps since I've got a positive rate of, flight, uh, rate of uh, climb. I probably could have done that earlier. I think the official number for Russian hardware is like 70 to 100 meters off the deck. Pulling back power because I am very fast. Uh, compared to that 400 I was shooting for before. And I actually just blew through my altitude, so I'm already off to a fantastic start. <laughs> That's just life in a plane. I mean, you get better and better the more you fly it, and then when you step away for a long time, you start getting worse and worse. But it's important to know how to recognize your mistakes when you make them and respond effectively. So like here, I'm I'm high and fast, so I've got it at a low throttle setting, and I've got it at a nice gentle descent while still maintaining my turn so I can keep my position relative to the runway. Now one thing to keep in mind in a plane, you are never where you want to be, if that makes any sense. You're never on altitude, on speed. You're always fighting to get back on altitude and speed and heading. That, that applies whether you're in a landing approach, that applies if you're in formation. That applies if you're on an attack run. You're never in the right place. You're always working to get there. You're always making adjustments. 
And as you go, the more and more you do it, the smaller and smaller those adjustments will need to be. But you will still need to make them. That will help. For one, it'll help control your uh, your ego, which isn't always an easy thing. And for another, it will help you to always be in the mindset of watching, you know, keeping a close eye on your gauges, looking out the window, seeing the terrain around you. Basically just constant sanity checks of where do I really need to be and how do I get back there? So we're coming up on a beam the runway, so I'm going to pull some power back to lose a little bit of speed. And again, the C-25 really doesn't like to slow down, at least not clean. Now I'm a little low, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch up, which will help me with my descent as well, or my uh, speed as well. Got up on 350, so I'm going to drop the gear. That's a lot of extra drag on the underside of the plane, so she's going to try to nose down, so I have to compensate for that. Add a little power to compensate for the extra drag for speed as well. I'm past the end of the threshold, so I'm going to go ahead and drop the first notch of flaps as well which will want, make it want to pitch up. So it's just constant minor corrections, adjustments. For example, I'm actually pretty much where I want to be on speed, but I'm also low. So I'm just trying to control that with a little extra power and a little extra trim and pitch input. Now ideally, if you do everything perfectly, your landing should feel boring. If you had a passenger, they should be asleep. If it's boring, then you know you're doing it right because you don't have to make sudden abrupt adjustments. Just tiny, just incremental, relaxing changes. All right, so I'm now turning onto my base leg. I'm actually already pretty much at 400 meters, which is where I wanted to be for my final, or for the start of my final, which is okay, because, you know what? I need to descend anyway, and there's no terrain in the way. It's not the right time for it to happen, but I can live with it. We're going to want to start our turn towards the runway here soon. We'll also need to start descending. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and drop that last notch of flaps and pop my speed brakes. And I feel like I'm maybe a little low, more or less on glide slope, but not quite. Eh, I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes from a distance. I'm also out of practice. I am slow, however, so I'm going to want to pitch lower than I might otherwise and add some power to adjust. Until I get back on glide slope and on speed. I am now fast. Um, it's also trying to pitch up on its own, so I'm adding a little bit of trim to compensate. And I'm not quite descending where I want towards the runway. So I'm going to pull back a little bit of power. Pitching for about 280, 290-ish. And you can tell if you're on track to the to the runway if it's if your touchdown point, if the threshold is staying in the same spot in your HUD glass. If it starts going down towards the bottom you might get the impression you're going to go long. If it starts coming up then Oh, so I'm trying to slow down a little bit here. If it starts going up, you're going to drop short. There we go, and I bounced it. That's okay. That's not that bad. And we are down. Gently lower the nose, not quite that abruptly. Brakes and drogue shoot because this thing does not like slowing down. So, not the best landing. I probably could have flared maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, one thing you can do is, especially if you're on speed, what you want to do is you play a game with the plane. 
Oh, shut up. So you're playing a game with the plane. You want to keep it off the ground with your flare. So you've, you've got the throttle idled, and you're using your pitch to control your rate of descent at this point. You want to try to hold it off the ground as it slows down for as long as possible. As you pitch up, it will produce more lift. It will also produce more drag. So it's going to slow down, and it will not quite descend as fast as it would otherwise. So you just you hold it off, you hold it off, you try to not gain altitude, but you're also trying not to lose it either. So you hold it off the ground as long as you can. Now it will land when it's darn good and ready at that point. I mean, it has no power in and it's slowing down, so it's coming down no matter what. The idea is, by doing that sort of, that, that play with it, you make sure that it's as slow as possible and you end up with that nice buttery smooth greaser touchdown. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, I've already retracted my speed brakes. I've left my flaps down, however, so I'll go ahead and retract those now. And I also cut my chute because I wouldn't be moving right now if I hadn't. So that's the general gist. I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can capture a good first-person view of that same descent through tack view so you can see it against a pitch ladder and get a, a good strong feel for what it looks like to, as far as was I on glide slope, was I high, was I low, where was I? But that's pretty much the gist. Alright, and here we are in TAC view in a first person view. This is as I'm turning out onto my final approach course. Uh, I've got my speed, which is low, as I pointed out. At this point I felt like I was low, but you'll notice I'm actually roughly 3 to 4 degrees, so I was actually a little bit high, actually. So again, that's just you know, the disadvantage of not having a pitch ladder in the thing. So, But, got my speed starting to recover. Notice my flight path marker was drifting towards the runway. And there it is, roughly two and a half, three degrees or so. And it's going to drift around a little bit. One nice thing about American Jets is this is actually what you have more or less in cockpit as you're doing your landing approach. So you can use it to eyeball it much more precisely than you can if you're just using a visual approach course like I was using here. So like, for example, right now I'm on about a four degree. I would be able to see that in a... Uh, in an F, you know, an A10 or F15, and correct promptly. But yeah, so I got my speed pretty much on, maybe a little high, not too bad though. Glide slope is, see, I'm starting to descend there, but it all worked out in the end. The touchdown was a little rough for my liking. Vertical velocity, yeah, it was about 200 meters per minute. That doesn't sound right. Two meters per minute? No. no meters per second is, I don't know. I don't feel like doing the math, but that's pretty much on the money. I was not perfect, but almost never am. And frankly, I'm just not that good of a pilot in general. But not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. So that's a, a, a what I feel like a reasonable feel for what a what a landing approach should look like in a Su 25T. And if you can get it close to that, you're doing all right. And once you're more and more experienced, frankly, you'll look like make that look just stupid bad. So I hope this hope this helps out some, and we'll see you in my next video.